a question to begin today. Who didn't lose their phone yesterday? Who didn't lose their phone yesterday? What's yesterday? What? Tuesday. Today's Wednesday. Yesterday was Tuesday. On Tuesday, did you lose your phone? Unbelievable, no? Now, before you went to bed last night, you went to bed, going to bed, did you think to yourself, wow, wow, I didn't lose my phone. You didn't think to yourself, who here has ever lost their phone? You lost your phone? Ever? You lost your phone? Credit card? Something? You've lost something. How annoying is it to lose your wallet or your phone? You've got to get a new card thing, you've got to cancel all your things, call the social security, you've got to... Someone once said to me, my identity has been stolen. And I was like, no one can steal a neshama. That's not your identity. But anyway, you have got everything stolen. You lose your phone, it's annoying. You've got all your photos for a start. Then all your history and your WhatsApp stuff. And then it's just very, very, very annoying when you lose your phone. Or you lose your wallet. It's just very, it just messes up your whole day. Maybe a few days actually. You mess, and not only do you lose out on what was in your wallet and what was in your phone, it's just then very, very inconvenient. It's very annoying. You have to arrange stuff and you can't call that. It's very annoying. Yeah? So why when you went to bed last night did you not think, Baruch Hashem, I didn't lose my phone or wallet yesterday? What, how, how annoying would it have been to lose your phone and wallet, but you didn't? Isn't that an amazing thing? Baruch Hashem! I have a question for you. Have you ever had strep throat? Most annoying thing in the world, because you have to swallow. But you know that it's going to hurt. So you're like, uh oh, here it comes, I have to swallow that. <laughs> ah! Ah! Now, how many times do you swallow a day? Many times, and every time it's going to hurt. Everyone swallow right now. Did that hurt you? How many times have you swallowed today and it didn't hurt you? Hundreds of times. Any of those times did you think to yourself, wow? It's amazing that I don't have strep throat. It's amazing. Anyone broke their leg this morning? <laughs> you didn't break your leg this morning? You, what, you just walked here? Fine. A rock didn't fall on your head? On your way here? No? So you didn't just think, oh my goodness, that's unbelievable. Did you get into the building, having walked two minutes from your dorm, and be like, wow, didn't break my leg, didn't get attacked. A bird didn't even poop on me. That's amazing. How many birds are there? You would expect to be pooped on at least once a month, surely. There are many birds. No one gets pooped on once a month. Have you ever been pooped on? Annoying. I had a friend who got pooped in his mouth. <laughs> it was an impossible scenario. We were, on the, we were on the school bus to a football match, a soccer match, and on the top of the school bus was just a little opening, a little window, and somehow that poop went in through that thing, <laughs> boom, into his mouth. You know what? I was always a little bit nice. So most people found it funny, but I, did, I was never a bully. I was the captain of the football team, I was like, but I, I never found other people suffering that funny. But it was a bit funny. <laughs> but you know, what? I didn't, you know what? I didn't find it funny, I did find it amazing. I was like, what's the chances of that? You're speaking Russian, right? Pardon? You're speaking Russian, right? When? It was a comparison. Oh, he was. He wanted to. So, very, very good football player, by the way. Anyway. 
How many things didn't go wrong today, didn't go wrong yesterday? How many things could go wrong? So many things. So many things. So it's ridiculous to even contemplate how many things could go wrong every minute, every hour, every second. So many things could go wrong. And it doesn't. Cheshbon and Nefesh. Tisha Asa. Number 19. Considering how Hashem is saving you and sparing you from all these difficult things and pains and troubles and suffering and sickness and ordeals and everything that goes along, that in general... And we're going to contemplate the fact that, yes, we do get bad things as well. How do we deal with that in Amuna? But for today, we're going to focus on how much you're saved from and spared from all the time. It could be much, 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 much worse in many, 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 many ways. And for us in particular, we are in the top 1% of privileged people on the face of the planet. We really are. In terms of education, finances, friendships opportunities you could do whatever you want basically that's physically possible you can be the the MVP in the MBA but you could be a lawyer in Italy if you decided to be it would take many years of studying you could but you could if you, if you decided that's my life goal you could put in the work you'd find it you'd find funding you'd get educated you could do anything you want you could eat anything you want for lunch today. You can do every, we're in the whatever your difficulties are in your life, I basically guarantee that there's more going right than that's going wrong. Basically. Not everyone all the time, there are terrible, horrible, traumatic things going on. I get that. But in general, especially for us, the good things in your life immensely outweigh the bad things. But what we tend to do is we tend to zoom in on pain. We zoom in on, on pain, on what's bad, on what's not good in our lives, and then we lose sight of the bigger picture, which is fair enough to be, you know, if you, got, if you bang your knee and you've got a painful knee and you can't play, then that becomes our whole awareness, our whole consciousness is my knee hurts. And it's very difficult to think at that time, yes, but my eyes don't hurt, and I can go to the bathroom, and I can... You know, read a book. I've got there's there's definitely, definitely, definitely a whole lot more going right than there is going wrong. And there's definitely, definitely a whole lot more things that could go wrong that aren't going wrong. So this Cheshbon is a, a different type of gratitude. We think about what we're grateful for, but now we're saying let's immensely increase our gratitude by thinking about all the bad things that could happen that don't happen. Rather than focusing on all the bad things, yeah, but this did happen. I didn't get it. We'll also deal with pain and crying, and that's okay. We're okay to feel our pain, but not to be completely immersed and wallowing and overwhelmed in our pain that we don't realize, you know, this could be worse. I told this story 50 times in the last two days. So I'm sure I've told you before, but I have to tell it again. Just in case there's one person. If everyone in this room heard this story, apart from one person, it's worth it for that one person. And it's worth it for you to hear again. Hanan ben Ari, one of the most famous musicians in Israel. Amazing music, by the way. Look it up. YouTube, very good music. So he has a song called Achaim Shelanu Tutim. Our life is strawberries. And it's going through all the difficult things about living in Israel. This is bad, and you know, the staff and the government, and whatever it is. But then he says, Even so, we've got a pretty good life. You know, our, our life is strawberries. Very famous song. So, about two months ago, he went to a hospital where lots of the soldiers who have had amputations were. And he went to be with them and cheer them up. And there was this boy, 18 years old, younger than most of you, who lost both his legs. And Hanan said to him, what song would you like me to sing? And he said, Chaim Shalana Tati. 
and Hanan Farva, he said, look, it's easy for me to sing that song, and I know the song's like a funny song, but I, I wasn't in Gaza, I didn't lose my leg, like, I, I get it that you might not be able to say that. And the boy looked at him and said, no, no, you don't understand, the other two guys in my tank, they're dead now. I've lost both my legs, but I can still see my mum and my dad. I can still see the sunset, I can still eat ice cream, I can still do something with my life. So yes, I lost both my legs, but I didn't die. That's an unbelievable level. An unbelievable level of, yes, this is bad, it could have been worse. Now there are many people that say, it's good, but it could have been better. It's good, it's good, it could have been better. Or, it's good, but I'm sure it's going to get bad. A pessimist is someone who's always looking at what's bad, and even if it's good, he says, well, it could be better, or it's going to be bad next. An optimist is looking at everything, he's saying, I'm sure it's going to be good. And then if it's not good, he says, well, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. That's a very, very, very high level. Chesh number 19. To focus on the flip of gratitude, not just be grateful for everything you do have, but to be grateful for everything, all the bad things and ordeals and suffering and pain that you don't have. And appreciate that. So I want you to get up and walk out just one time today. Appreciate your legs. When was the last time you appreciated your legs? That your legs just work? And not when they're painful because you've just been, had leg day in the gym. If you do leg day, you don't really need to. It's all about upper body, really. You use your legs to walk, you know. Or when you see someone in a wheelchair. How about just walking along and stopping and being like, I actually used to do this when I was in Yeshiva a while ago. I haven't done it for a bit. People thought I was crazy, which is okay. People always think I'm crazy. It's like, it's amazing. And they're like, what? And I say, I can see. And they, they're like, what, you had eye problems? I said, no, I don't have eye problems. <laughs> I don't have eye problems. You know what? My long, my long sight isn't great. I actually got glasses for driving, and I don't have a car. <laughs> but my long sight isn't great. But I'm like, I don't need it that much. I can see you. I beg you. I can see you there. I don't know who you are, but I can see you there. Okay. Two. Good. So I've got good. I've got good, good, good. Not bad. So then the next part of this section. By the way, where do we learn about this in the Torah? This idea. There are so many, do you know, I think we've all got saved from something recently where you could have tripped and you walked by and you didn't realize and then just, uh, you just didn't, re you don't realize how many miracles are happening. A rock did fall at one point in your life and just missed your head but you didn't see it. Sometimes you get to see something that, oh it was a near miss. Well, but I think we have lots and lots of near misses that you're just not aware of. Where do we learn this in the Torah? Bilam and Balak. They wanted to curse the Jewish people. And there's, we got a whole Pasha in the Torah about how Bilam is going to curse the Jewish people with all terrible things. And he goes on the mountain and he's going to curse you with this. And they bring up sacrifices and offerings. And they get, the Jewish people are all sitting down in the valley doing their thing. Bilam's going freaking out, going crazy this whole Pasha. Do the Jewish people even know about it? No. They have no idea what's going on. There's a whole portion in the Torah that the Jewish people had no idea what was going on. They were being saved in an immense way. And they didn't have any idea. It's only later when Hashem dictated that Pasha to Moshe. Moshe was probably, uh, maybe Moshe knew, by the way. But no one, he wrote it down. It's like, really Hashem? That was happening? And then he brings the Pasha, he brings the Torah to the Jewish people and says, by the way, Pasha's Balak. And they're like, I can't believe it. We had no idea. So what if it happens? Is that no, I mean, after it happened, happened but no, no, on Mount Sinai, Moshe received all the stories that happened up until Mount Sinai, and all the mitzvahs. Yes. But then after Mount Sinai, what happened? The stories that happened after Mount Sinai, Moshe didn't receive on Mount Sinai. They happened, and then he went into the tent of meeting, and Hashem says, okay, write down this story. 
the spies, the whatever it was. So Hashem didn't give the whole Torah on Mount Sinai. It was on Mount Sinai and for the next 38 years in the desert. As it was happening, he was then dictating to Moshe how he needs to write it down. So after that whole thing, Moshe writes it down and, and then he reads the Pasha of the week and all the Jews are like, they're brilliant! And they realize we're all being saved. So I think what's going to happen is when you die, Hashem's going to read a whole Pasha of you like, by the way, remember you when you were driving yet that uh, motorbike a bit dangerously? You really were meant to slip, but I moved. There was, well, there was something in the street. I moved it out of the way. Remember when you were in Thailand and you did that? That rock was meant to fall. I stuck it in there for you. I believe that's going to happen. We're going to get a whole rundown of all the amazing ways in which Hashem saved us during our life. So what we could try and do is try and appreciate that a little bit tonight. Tonight you're going to go to bed. I want you to list ten bad things that didn't happen to you today. Do it. Ten, and the more likely that it could have happened, the stronger this exercise will be. So if you say, I wasn't like, kidnapped by aliens, is, you can say, I didn't lose my phone. I didn't break my leg. I didn't, I didn't. I wasn't, ins no one insulted me today. I went to the post office to pick up my wife's two dots of hood, and it was there. I hope, at 2.30. <laughs> But if it is there, I'm going to be like, that's amazing, because it didn't need to have been there. Great. So now the next bit is, we've now kind of seen that without... We've now seen that without repressing our, our difficulties in our life, which we have to deal with, that probably the vast majority of things in your life are going right, not wrong. Good? The vast majority of things in your life are going right, not wrong. Question, why do you deserve that? What did you do exactly to deserve that your digestive system is basically working well and that your breath is okay and your lungs are okay? And how many people here, when they breathe in, it really like burns their lungs? Anyone? No. When you pee, does it really burn? No. Some people it does, by the way. Basically, so why did you deserve that is the question. This is the second part of our cheshbon. First part is to understand we have much more good than bad and how much bad could have happened. Second part is, okay, so what did I do? Am I the biggest tzaddik in the world? Am I helping everyone? Am I thinking positively? Am I basically deserving of the fact that most of my life is pretty great? And the answer is, not really. Now I think we're doing pretty well. I think you're basically pretty nice people. I think we do deserve good in our lives, but not this much. So the second thing is how appreciative we should really be for this. The fact that, and in a way, we've got to be careful with this idea, maybe we deserve more bad things to happen to us based on how we behave. If there's really divine justice. So if we think about our lives, now we're doing very well by the way, we're in yeshiva and we're growing and we're learning, but in general, when I was out in that world, before, when I was doing things that very much went against my soul and what God wanted for me, I, I do actually think about this sometimes. In Asia, I was doing all my stuff in Asia that the Torah wouldn't be so happy with. Why didn't Hashem just like smash me up big time? Should have been like, okay, you can't do that, smash, bam, you did that, that, bam. In fact, thinking about it, <laughs> I wouldn't have made it through Asia. So I didn't, I didn't deserve it. I didn't have God in my life. God had me in his life though. So Hashem still, too, I didn't deserve it. And I got it, just because Hashem loves us. So the immense gratitude we should feel that, by the way, I don't want anyone to start walking around and being like, I deserve to be punished. That's unhealthy. You don't deserve to be punished. Well, you do, but you shouldn't think about it. <laughs> you don't really, you get, you get the idea. So there we go. Cheshman and Nefesh number 19. Consider how many bad things that could go wrong, that don't go wrong, and then have immense appreciation knowing that I didn't necessarily deserve that, and in fact, it's possible that I deserve a little bit more not so good in my life. So I'm inspired and motivated to do better, to use what I've been given, because if Hashem says to you, you know what, I could have taken away your eyesight, don't use your eyesight to look at things that Hashem doesn't want you to look at. 
I, you know, I could have broken both your legs, taken off both your legs. Well, don't use your legs to walk to a place that Ashyam doesn't want you to walk to. So now you can start actually using these things to say, okay, brilliant, I've been given these amazing gifts, am I using them in a healthy, proper, correct way? Cheshman Nefesh, number 19. Chabez.